If you are looking for a super budget friendly monitor, then I have two monitors to show you today. They are from Cooler Master and this is the GA22FC, a 21.5 inch monitor at only 279 ringgit Malaysia. And this is the GA2501, a 24.5 inch monitor at only 539 ringgit. So, are these monitors worth the price? I tested it out for the past few weeks and I found out they are actually quite okay. Now, other than the obvious size difference, these two displays have different panels but they both have 100Hz refresh rate and also 1080p in resolution. What's the difference here though is the color reproduction. For the GA22FC, our colorimeter reports that this monitor covers around 95% of sRGB color gamut and has a very low delta E number. The maximum achievable brightness is also not bad, we're getting around 222 nits as well, so if you're using it indoors, then yeah, it's gonna be fine. As for the GA2501, it is using a much better panel. It covers around 96.5% of sRGB and has a maximum brightness of around 300 nits, which is higher than the smaller GA22FC. As for the pixel response time, the smaller one is using a VA panel and the G2G response time isn't exactly the best, so I just turned the overdrive to extreme, which pretty much means the pixels will go into overdrive at the highest response time possible. The bigger one though is using an IPS LCD panel and the pixel response time is much better, so the overdrive setting in the OSD menu even if I just leave it at off, it doesn't actually matter that much. Either way, the response time of both of these monitors are actually better than one of the monitors that we have reviewed recently, which is also more expensive. If we're going to play games on these two monitors, then I don't actually realize that there's actually motion blur. Of course, I'm not a competitive gamer, so your experience may vary. We also have Adaptive Sync turned on for both monitors which I highly recommend you to do so as well because that eliminates screen tearing. There are also a lot more settings within the OSD menu and this is the one feature that I want to highlight, motion clearness. As the name implies, it does make the motion of fast moving objects look clearer on the screen. I can't find much details about this but it seems like the monitor is doing black frame insertion to mimic backlight strobing to reduce motion blur but at the expense of maximum brightness because once you turn on the motion clearness the maximum brightness is cut by half since these two monitors aren't particularly bright to begin with i honestly just don't use the motion clearness feature at all so the question is for such a low price tag on these two monitors what's the catch surprisingly the catch isn't exactly a serious one it's just that they come with a rather basic monitor stand. It's uh, literally only having a minor tilt adjustment and that's it. There's no pivot, there's no rotation, no nothing. What they do have is VESA mounts 100 by 100 millimeters, and that further increases the versatility of these two budget monitors. And perhaps the ports, the GA22FC is so basic that it only has one HDMI 1.4 port, a power jack and also a VGA port. Yeah, VGA in the year 2024. The bigger GA2501 has the same port but with the addition of an audio jack, which is actually very useful if you want to connect this monitor to a console like PS5 or Nintendo Switch. I mean, these monitors are great for someone who wants a cheap, reliable monitor. You are indeed getting what you paid for and I can't complain for that price. They just work and they're reliable. Once again, the GA22FC is at 279 ringgit only, whereby the GA2501 is at 539 ringgit Malaysia. The bigger one is obviously more expensive and it also has a better display panel, but remember the resolution and the refresh rate remains the same. And the stand on both of these monitors are also identical. So if you're paying more price, you aren't getting a better stand anyway. So that's it, that's all that we have to share with you about these two Cooler Master monitors. They are very affordable. Personally, I would recommend you to get this one. But for our use case, if we want to use another monitor for like 
live preview for our camera, this monitor would do just fine as well. So yeah, do decide on which monitor suits your use case the most and we'll see you guys in the next video.